She was an award-winning executive event planner for Google. She worked with high-profile clients, CEOs, planned executive retreats. After hundreds of hours of education and blind tastings, she received her certification from the court master sommeliers. And she's only, did you know there's only like 28 women that have that certification? I can't wait to hear about that. And she's the author of The Art of Event Planning. Welcome, Gianna Gaudini. Did I say your name correctly? <laughs> you sure did. There's a lot of vowels. I know. It's like a pasta dish. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for being on the show. You're, you're out in San Francisco, correct? I'd love for you you know, to tell our viewers how you got into event planning. I love to attend events, but it sounds like you have planned some spectacular ones. Yes. I think um, many professionals in my line of work don't necessarily go to school to become event planners, although it is becoming a more popular profession. Um, so I actually went to school to be a doctor and like many folks, I pivoted along the way and ultimately decided to follow my passion and knew that I had a passion for, you know, really creating memorable experiences uh, for people um, that really ended up driving actions as a result, um, which plays really well into corporate event planning. So when you look back on your life, I think many of us remember experiences you know, there, there are these pivotal moments um, that so many of us plan from weddings to birthdays to graduations to dinner parties where we're breaking bread with loved ones. And so I wanted to make this into a career where I could really create these incredible experiences that were meaningful to people and also drove business results. That's great. So you, you went to school in San Diego at the University of San Diego, and did you end up majoring in interior design? No, I or? didn't. I majored in biology. Oh. They did not have an interior design or really any major arts majors, um, although I will say San Diego State School is now the first I believe it's the first college to have a master's degree in event planning. My friend Carl Winston is um, the head of that program over there, which is really exciting to see that picking up steam. But at no, San Diego I State, as a, as a bio major. Oh wow! Did you say San Diego State? Yes. Right. Well, that's where my son Garrett, which I know is your husband's name, but yeah, that's where my son is going now to San Diego State. That's that's a great that's amazing. It's that's a, beautiful down there, and they've got a, such a wonderful hospitality program. I was lucky enough to be able to teach their first virtual class in April um, for their hospitality program. So it had been planned to be a virtual class for months before and with COVID, um, it just worked out really well. So they've got a really robust program down there now, which is great. That's great. And so now you're in San Francisco, which is a beautiful place. Is, is that where you started off in the tech world, uh, how, you know, getting that position with Google? And was that position for specifically event planning? Yeah, so I was born and raised here in the Bay Area. Um, my first event planning corporate job was in San Francisco. I started out on the agency side and worked for a couple of agencies and also the CTO Forum, which was a nonprofit tech organization. Um, and then after that, um, my former colleague from one of these agencies recruited me over to her team at Google. And at Google, I was on the events and experiences team for nearly a decade, uh, where we were really a center of excellence for the company. Um, and we really, you know, our remit covered everything from product launches to internal events for, you know, upwards of 20,000 Google employees to, you know, 30,000 person Google Cloud events, even movie premieres and brand and reputation events that took me to the hill. So it was a, a wonderful journey and one of the reasons why I wanted to share my experiences in my book. 
so now, so after that, you left and then you started your own event planning company, correct? You know, I've I've had my my LLC um, kind of on the back burner for years now. People reach out to me often for consulting, and I do a lot of strategy work and sessions with with people. But I actually left Google because um, some former Google colleagues of mine recruited me over to the SoftBank Vision Fund to go build and run the first global event team for that um, for that brand. And then following that, um, I am now at AWS. So I now run the global AWS training and certification events team. Oh, wow. Okay. That's great. Well, I, I, I guess I was thinking for some reason, I don't know why you had had, you know, your own company for event planning. So you're actually with an agency that plans events? No, or... I'm in-house at Amazon Web Services. So oh. I, I'm employed by Amazon now. Um, I do have an LLC, Gianna Godini LLC. That's, you know, for my book and um, my platform and the speaking and consulting that I do from time to time. Um but it's funny that you mentioned that, Pam, because when I went into event planning, that was my end goal was to eventually have my own company. So, I, you know, maybe I'm not too far off from that. <laughs> Got it. I know that your book, what inspired you to write your book is, you know, just putting all your ideas together. And then I know you write about manifesting your perfect life. Can you tell us about that? Of course. Um, so I've always been a writer, you know, as a child, I had a neighborhood newspaper for many years. And then um, I parlayed that love of writing into my wine blog, Decantress, which was kind of my, you know, what I moonlit as um, for a while <laughs> in early adulthood. Um, as you mentioned with, you know, my sommelier certification and other projects um, that were wine related. And then, and then I had my first child and I found that there was a lot less free time in my days and I still wanted some sort of mechanism or platform to be able to connect with the community and, you know, give back. And, um, and so I, th I thought writing a book would be a great way to scale um, my time. And, and it was, and I, I was really lucky because I had the serendipitous encounter with a book editor um i was contributing to a friend of mine's book about career and the editor of her book took a liking to my career journey and proposed that i write a book about it so um you know it was it was kind of the right uh impetus for me to just dive in head first and and uh, and get it done a few years ago I, I love that co the cover of you and your outfit you're wearing in that staircase <laughs> is absolutely beautiful. Is that at someone's home in the Bay Area or is it at a hotel? It look it's beautiful. Oh, I if I could, you know, if I had a nickel for every time someone asked me that. And the funny thing is, is I actually did the book shoot at the San Francisco Design Center on this on a staircase, but then we photoshopped in these stairs and we must have gone through hundreds of different photos of stairs to find just the right stairs. And everybody wants to know, yeah, that that was the real stairs, exactly. And then we photoshopped in um, this more ornate uh, backdrop. So, but, but it take quite a while to find just the right one. <laughs> oh, I love that. I know speaking about being, I, I'm a boy mom also, so I know how busy and active I, yours is a lot smaller. We have, I have, we have a 19 and 21 year old, but they were, you know, small. I want to, I'd find it interesting how you, you know, all your wine tasting and how you, you know, if 28 women only in the U S have that certification. That's pretty amazing. How did you go about liking liking wine and the blind tasting? I was, you know, looking up to see how you get certified and oh my goodness. <laughs> what an accomplishment. Oh, that was a that was a fun period of my life, let me tell you. I do a lot less wine drinking these days with a, you know, with a toddler, but um 
my father actually retired from the tech industry fairly early and became a farmer, as he likes to say, uh, which wasn't completely true, but he did, um, he did have a vineyard and began bottling his own wine, which kind of stoked my curiosity in, uh, in winemaking and, you know, and all things about wine. So, um, I've always been a lifelong learner, and when I would ask him questions, he would encourage me to research on my own. So I thought, you know, what the heck, I'm going to get my certification. It's a great uh, mechanism for really learning this inside out. Um, and also, as I mentioned earlier, I eventually wanted to run my own business, and I thought, you know, having a niche is always a great a great way to to make yourself more marketable. And so... My end goal was always to move to Napa, and I would be the event planner of Napa, um, since Napa is, you know, the second biggest tourist destination in California, second only to mm. Disneyland. So that oh, wow. was my that was my master goal when I set out on the on the wine um, journey. So it was very fun. Um, I learned a lot. Blind tasting is it's such an interesting activity. I, I highly encourage it because you know you basically take all the theory you've learned about wine so from what properties certain grape varietals have to what years had smoke or other you know things and and then you apply that to the subjectivity of tasting wine and make your best educated guess at what that wine you're tasting is so it's it's very challenging um but also you know Drinking wine uh, to study is it's very fun. So that was a that was a fun part of my career for sure. Yeah, it's something you can always use. So I'm sure going out to dinner with you as a restaurant, everybody has you pick out the wine. I think Napa is one of the most beautiful cities. I remember we used to live in Los Angeles, and we would always fly up to Napa. And one time a friend of mine is like, had a great idea. Let's rent bikes and go from vineyard to vineyard. And <laughs> as you know, she had no, I, I don't think she knew that. As you know, they can be a mile apart. And then after a couple of glasses of wine, bike riding is <laughs> not the best thing to do. I think we ended up dumping the bikes and then <laughs> let's go take that limo or something instead. Oh, I know. It's, it's magical. I got married up there. And wow. You know, it's it's just such a beautiful place, and they really do hospitality well up there. Um, and so it's always just been a source of inspiration for me. So definitely, a you know, a, a happy place and a passion place. I know. I love it. Wanted to ask you, what is your holy grail of event planning success? I mean, either live or virtual, some, some of the tips you can give us or what you say. Oh, there's so many tips, but I think there's some overarching principles that definitely can apply to both virtual or in-person events. And, um, you know, one thing that I try to really drill in when anybody's asking my advice is take a step back because people tend to start with the details. I don't know if it's because of Pinterest or, you know, what, but everybody wants to start with what color the linens are going to be and what florals they're going to use or what, what cake they're going to pick or whatever. And, you know, you really need to start with a very clear event brief that includes what you are expecting out of this event, you know, what your goals are and what you really want your attendees to do, think and feel during and after your event. Um, so it's not necessarily just that moment in time that's important, but it's the entire attendee journey leading up to the event, during the event and following the event and making sure that you're very crisp on that you know, then you can fill in the details after you've got those rocks. Um, and also how you're going to measure your success. And, you know, that sounds very corporate, but it can also be applied to social events. I think a lot of times people get overwhelmed when they start to realize the many different components that go into creating a successful event. But, um, you know, another one of the things in my Holy Grail is take a step back and just identify the top three priorities for your event, what are the three things that you want people to remember? Because I truly believe, and I don't know if this is, you know, 
reviewed scientifically or, or what, but, um, but people really tend to believe to remember three things from any one experience. And so, you know, focus on three things and then everything else is the cherry on top. So, you know, those are some very basic, um, principles that I like to begin with. And then, you know, a few other things that I think make events, just take them to the le next level would be, you know, taking a personalized approach. So personalization, um, adding in those elements of surprise and delight, who doesn't love a little bit of surprise or a wink and a smile, um, thinking through pain points and how to eliminate them. That's instantly going to make you a brand that people love, um, you know, figuring out a way to make the experience collaborative or co-creative, I like to say. So instead of it just being a, you know, one-to-many or a, if virtually a broadcast experience, how can you make it more of a two-way engagement that inspires, you know, more skin in the game, more community building? Um, you know, those are a few of my holy grails. I guess the final one that I almost forgot to mention that's mm -hmm. very important is emotion. You know, we're humans are so unique because we're emotional, emotionally driven creatures. So what kind of emotions are you hoping to inspire in people through your experiences and how can you create those emotions? So hopefully that whets the appetite, but there's a lot more details in my book about those. I love that. That's great. I, I remember attending a wedding in outside Los Angeles and just how you mentioned a lot of the three tips is exactly, she must have read your book, but she had the <laughs> backdrop of the Pacific Ocean. The food was something to be remembered, a huge mound of all these crab lakes. And then for special effects, she had fireworks on the beach. That was a complete surprise. So that's great. What's I just have another question for you, but what's, you've done a lot. What is still on your bucket list? Oh, the bucket list. <laughs> There's so many. Well, travel is at the top of it right now. I'm itching to, to get all over the world. Um, so that's definitely on my bucket list. Um, gosh, I was just thinking of another bucket list item the other day, and now I'm completely blanking on what that was. Um but definitely traveling. I, you know, I'd like to get to every continent, as many countries as possible. Um, darn it, I wish I could remember that thing that I was, that's at the tip of my tongue. It'll come back to me probably right as we're signing off, Pam. You, you can email it to me and I'll put it on the post. And I know on your website, you have a free event planning guide, 10 questions to ask before planning an event. That's excellent. I do, yes. That'd be so what's the best way to get a hold of you? Um, it's very easy to get a hold of me via my, my website, giannagaudini.com. Um, you can also reach out to me at gianna at gaudini.com. Um, I love hearing from all my readers, so feel free to send me a note. I'm also happy to send you a signed sticker for your book. Um, and I can also be found across all the social media channels. You know, you type in my name, it's pretty unique. It's, it's easy to pop up. Well, thank you so much. Learned a lot and look forward to, you know, more events out there and more travel and, and being able to get out there. But thank you so much for being on the Pam Goodwin Show. And I really appreciate you taking time. Thank you, Pam. Thanks. It was great chatting with you today. Thanks a lot, Gianna. I cannot wait to come back to, to Napa and hope, hopefully we can go have some wine together. Thank you.